Hi, Bobcats. This video starts chapter 15 on chemical equilibrium. Uh, this chapter is the foundation for chapter 16 and 17, so it is so important uh, to learn thoroughly the material in this chapter because it's the foundation on which the next two chapters are built. In addition to that, the chapter that we do on electrochemistry and the chapter on thermochemistry spiral back in equilibrium for a big chunk of those chapters. So equilibrium is something that's going to be with us for the rest of the semester. It is so important that you get a firm grasp on the basic tools of approaching equilibrium problems. And this chapter is where we're going to do that. This slide lists our objectives for this chapter. We're going to define equilibrium, figure out how to write equilibrium constants, start to use the expressions for the equilibrium constants as formulas. We'll know all but one of the values in there and we're able to solve for the other one. We'll see how changing the way that the chemical equation is written changes the value of the equilibrium constant and its associated expression. And we'll look at a related concept called the reaction quotient, which is something we use when we're not sure whether or not we're in equilibrium yet. Um, we will develop a problem solving technique known as an ice table or an ice chart for solving these problems. And we'll explore something called Le Chatelier's principle, which has to do with identifying how a reaction will respond if we change the conditions under which the reaction is run. I'd also like for you to make it a goal for this chapter to work as many problems as you can. Um, students in past semesters have told me that the most efficient use of their time, the most bang for their buck, came from working problems. And uh, equilibrium is all about solving problems. Equilibrium is a situation in which a chemical reaction does not go to completion. The reaction that's given here, the synthesis of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gases, is a great example of an equilibrium reaction. If you start with a container that's filled with nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, and you give it the opportunity to react, it's going to start producing some ammonia but it never completely converts to ammonia. You'll always have this mixture of nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia. And if this reaction starts uh, by ta taking pure ammonia and giving it the opportunity to react, it'll break down and give you some nitrogen gas and some hydrogen gas, but there'll always still be some ammonia present as well. So in an, an equilibrium mixture, you'll have, a, you'll have a mixture of both reactants and products. Another way that equilibrium gets described is that this reaction continually goes in both the forward direction and the reverse direction. And you'll notice the um, arrow that's used in this reaction is a double-headed arrow. It's right here, and that double-headed arrow is trying to indicate that this reaction is continually going in both the forward direction and the reverse direction. What I mean by going in the reverse direction is that molecules of ammonia decompose to give us nitrogen and hydrogen. Equilibrium is often described as a dynamic equilibrium which is an oxymoron because dynamic means something is changing and equilibrium means that something is staying constant. So how can we have something changing and something staying constant all at the same time? Well, let's use as an example this Erlenmeyer flask that I put a little bit of water into and then I put a rubber stopper in the top and I just let this sit in my office for a few days. Over time, you could see condensation forming on the uh, inside of the glass surfaces. This was happening because water molecules evaporated, went into the gas phase, and then at some point they condensed and went back to the liquid phase on the sides of the container. 
Well, that is happening because some of the liquid turns into a gas, and then some of that gas turns into a liquid, and this process just continually keeps going. That's where the dynamic part of equilibrium comes in. The thing that's changing is the individual molecules. Are they in the liquid phase or are they in the gas phase? The reaction keeps going, converting liquid to gas to liquid to gas. Now here's the equilibrium part. The equilibrium part is the distribution of molecules. How many of them are in the gas phase and how many of them are in the liquid phase? Once equilibrium has been achieved, the amount of molecules in the liquid phase remains constant and the amount in the gas phase remains constant, even though this reaction continually happens. So every time a molecule evaporates, somewhere else in this flask, a molecule is condensing. So here we go. The dynamic part means that the forward and the reverse reactions keep occurring, and the equilibrium part is telling us that the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. Since those reaction rates are equal, the amount or the concentrations of the reactants and products will remain constant. These two types of graphs are often drawn in conjunction with equilibrium reactions. The first graph is showing us the concentration of these chemicals over time, and the second graph is showing us the rates of the reactions over time. So the reaction that we're looking at is two atoms of iodine in the gas phase are in equilibrium with an iodine molecule in the gas phase. So in this depiction, we are starting with iodine molecules, so that'll be the red line. And as the iodine molecules react, I'm, I'm sorry, iodine atoms react, they're going to produce iodine molecules. So initially, we don't have any of the iodine molecules, but then over time, the iodine molecules are produced. And then at the time that's indicated here with the dotted line, after or at that time equilibrium is reached and the amount of iodine atoms and the amount of iodine molecules remains constant for all times after because equilibrium has been reached if we look at the rate graph the top the the top line the red one is the rate of the forward reaction and the bottom one is the rate of the reverse reaction. And again, at that time that's marked with the dotted line, we are hitting equilibrium. And in terms of rates, once we hit equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. This often appears in multiple choice type items where you'll ask, be asked to pick the correct statement and there'll be lots of variations in there about concentrations and rates. The, the correct um, description is that at equilibrium, the concentrations remain constant and at equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction will be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Another way of depicting this reaction is in terms of the particles. We have for our reaction, the dimerization of NO2. Dimerization just means that two molecules of the same thing stick together to make a bigger molecule. And in this case, it's NO2. Two molecules of NO2 react to give us one molecule of N2O4. Initially, in the first square, we only have NO2 molecules. Remember our standard color coding is that uh, nitrogen molecules are blue and oxygen molecules are red. So we have NO2 molecules exclusively in box A. And then in box B, two of those molecules have stuck together to form N2O4. In box C, we're now up to three molecules of N2O4 as some of these NO2 molecules have stuck together. And then in box D, notice that original N2O4 that formed has broken apart, and those NO2 molecules that were generated have now hooked up with other NO2 molecules, and we've got two new N2O4s, plus there's a new N2O4 up here in the middle, and on the top, 
all of those broke apart so that we have only NO2 on top. But notice that for box C and box D, both of these have three molecules of N2O4. So it looks like by box C we have hit equilibrium because the concentration of N2O4 is remaining constant. Likewise, if we wanted to focus on NO2, um, in box C we have four NO2s and in box D we have four NO2s. So it looks like by box C we have hit equilibrium. Sometimes you'll be asked to calculate an equilibrium constant based on diagrams like this. And um, if you do, you just want to count. If you are asked to do that, you just need to count the molecules and um, use the number of molecules in place of the concentration in the equilibrium constant expression. That'll make more sense when you're reviewing for the test, because at this point, we haven't even talked about what an equilibrium constant expression is all about. So our goals for this video were really just the very first one for the chapter, to define and explain the condition of equilibrium. Um, it's a dynamic process because the uh, forward and reverse reactions continually take place. All right, so there we go. The forward and the reverse reactions keep going. Um, the equilibrium or the not changing part is um, that once you have reached equilibrium, the concentrations of the reactants and the products remain constant. And then a corollary to that is that the um, rate of the forward reaction will be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction once you have hit equilibrium.